Hello friends and welcome to another tutorial. Um, we are going to make this very, very, very sweet butterfly. Uh, I was able to get a hold of Yarnspiration's Bernat Pipsqueak Striped Yarn. It's a yarn cake and it's in the colorway Playdate. Um, now, I don't think you can, you can find these striped cakes anymore, but I do know that you can find um, Pipsqueak the, the Pipsqueak yarn in variegated. You can find it in solid colors. Um, it's on Amazon. It's in Walmart. This, this, this particular um, type of yarn, I think, is usually sold in Walmart. Um, but because you can get it in uh, solid colors and in lots of other different variations, I thought I would still do this tutorial for you because um, really the options are limitless. You've got the row counts that I'll be giving you, and, and you can just design it your own way using the same row counts and following the same um, assembly. Um, but if you can get a hold of this yarn, it is, it is so gorgeous. I just absolutely love it. Um, I'm using my Addy 46 needle machine, and um, I am also going to use my Addy egg. But if you don't have the Addy egg, I give you options um, in the video as to what you can um, substitute, what do instead of the Addy egg, okay? So um, let's get our, our material. And you know what? Y you don't even have to use this particular yarn. Use your favorite yarn and just follow the pattern. Uh, it's just um, gonna be one of those dearly loved patterns, I'm sure. So thanks again for joining me, my friends. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Let me just make a quick mention that um, this pillow or stuffed animal or however you want to look at it um, is 12 inches tall. So it's a nice size. Um, I just thought I would make mention of that. All right, so to start this project, we are going to go from this to this. <laughs> now, the reason being is because each color is a lot. And so um, to do this project, if you, if you just take it off the ball as it comes, and you can do that, you're only gonna see um, two colors on one side. I wanna see all of these colors. So we are going to um, split them like this. If you have a yarn ball winder, you uh, can use that to make your cakes or just unwind them by hand. And uh, we're going to use these individually, just like this so that I can, I can um, or we can control the amount of rows in each color and make it more uniform, okay? So first thing you gotta do is divide your colors. All right, so now that we have our 46 needle machine or 48 center, if that's what you have, we're going to begin. So I lined up my colors in the order that I want to use them, and we're going to use five colors for this part of the project, okay? So we're going to um, start by bringing the last white and the first black needle in line with the yarn guide here. And you'll notice that I color that black um, red divider with a permanent black marker so that I always know when the end of my row is coming around. I'm going to take my first color, go behind that first black needle, in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. This is how we cast on, okay? Just like this. Before we get to the end, and I can see I'm getting to the end because my black divider is coming around, change my row counter to zero so I'm ready to begin. Okay, so I'm in front of that last white into the yarn feeder. And I'm gonna begin knitting, putting a little bit of pressure on the yarn here just by pinching it with my thumb and my finger. Not much, just a very little bit. And we're going to knit 10 rows. Okay, so go ahead, knit 10 rows with the first color. And I'll see you back. All right, I can see that coming around. I know I'm at the end of my 10th row. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this yarn tail, open the latch, make sure it goes between the last white and the first black. We're going to grab our second color, which for me is this beautiful, beautiful pink. We're going to put it inside there. Now, if I was wanting to do a jogless join, I would then take it and put it behind here. So if you're using worsted weight yarn that doesn't have fluff like this, take it and put it behind there. Um, 
Well, you know what? I'll just do it because because it's so fluffy. You don't you won't see a jogless join on this one, but I will do it just for the sake of those of you who might be using um, different yarn. Okay, so you take that pink one and you put it on the other side of the white needle, and oops, and then we're going to do ten rows of this color. Okay. So once that comes around, now when I first started doing this jogless join, I would do three or four rows before I would tighten this, um, but I, I found that, it, I, like I think it works better on the second row because then it's it automatically stops, um, like you don't have to guess as much as how, how much tension to put on this. So you're going to take both of these ends and you're going to pull them away from each other. And it'll only go so far, so then it automatically stops where it needs to. So I'm going to start doing this now on the second row. Okay, tie a knot, and then just cut those off a little shorter and make them even. And we're going to keep going around until we get to row number 20. And then you're going to complete row number 20. Okay, so this is 12, 13, and I'm going to keep going until I finish row 20, and I'll see you back. All right, that's row 20. I'm going to cut that yarn tail, open my latch, put it between the last white, first black, grab my next color, which is also green, but it's a lighter shade of green, put it into that yarn guide, swing it back, oops, make sure that's in the right spot, and then we're going to knit another 10 rows till we have 30 rows done, and then we're going to switch to our next color and do another 10 rows till we have 40, and then one more time, color change, with 10 rows till we have 50. So we we have five different colors, or however many colors you wanna use, alternating every 10 rows till we get 50 rows done. Okay, so once you have that done, I'll see you back. All right, so we've completed 50 rows. Now we're going to cut a long strand from our tail, open our latch, then close it, put it in between the last white, the first black, Always making sure you do that because you still have to finish working this one and you have to work this one um, in that row, okay? And now we're going to cast off. This is looking so beautiful. Okay, so we're going to rotate our barrel, take off a couple individuals first so we can get some, um, that's just underneath my knot, there we go. So we get some slack on it and then we can take off more. Put your finger over those red teeth. If you're scared you're going to lift up too high, um, otherwise it will drop off the teeth and you will drop a row. Okay, so again if you're new put your finger there, 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 and then you won't drop a row, okay, until you, until you get the feel of the tension. I still sometimes do it and I have the feel of the tension, so sometimes just a good idea, okay. You're going to continue doing this until you get them all off. Okay, so go ahead, finish taking all your stitches off, and I'll see you when you're done. All right, so we have our piece off the machine, and boy, is it soft. And we're going to stretch it out both directions. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make one more exactly like this, okay? Follow the same color patterning that you did um, so that they're identical, okay? So go ahead, make one more, and then when you're done that, put that aside, um, and we will move on to the next part of the project, which will need our Addy 22 and the white section of yarn from this uh, skein of um, yarn, okay? All right, so we're moving on to the body part of our butterfly we're going to take our white we're going to cast on behind that first black in front behind and in front all the way around just like we did on our big machine okay before i get to the end i'm going to set my row counter to zero oops that one's going to snag there we go put it in my yarn guide i'm going to go slow for this first row this white seems a little more fluffy than the other colors Oops, getting past that first row is all we're going to need. There we go. And we're going to knit 60 rows, okay? So just straight knit 60 rows just like this. And once my um, project starts to hit the table, I will show you what I do with it so that I can maintain the tension around the stitches here. We have to uh, 
we have to bring it up with it inside of itself so that there's some weight and so there's when it starts to hit the table then this pulls up like this and you could risk losing a stitch off those needles so if you're new and you're not not sure what i'm talking about once your project starts to hit the table stop your video and come back and see me because the next section will be what you do with it once it touches the table okay otherwise keep going knit 60 rows okay well it's not going to touch the, the table before i finish <laughs> I only have two rows left. But if you're knitting something long um, and it begins to touch the table, just pull it up within itself and just set it back down like that. And keep doing that um, as you knit your tube, however long it is, um, just so that it prevents you from dropping a stitch here because because the um, it's hitting the table and it's pushing up on this and putting some ten some looseness on it, okay? So that's all I do. Just pick it up and shove it back in there, okay? But I'm going to just finish here. This is 60, okay? So we're going to cut off a long tail and we're going to do what we did with our wings. Okay. We're going to put the end on our needle and we're going to cast off. Okay. All right. So turn your barrel, take one, then another. If you're using the same yarn, make sure that when you pick it up that you go way down into the needle and then scoop it up, okay? So that you get every fiber. Otherwise, it'll snag on itself and, and you'll have a hard time pulling the drawstring closed. So right down into there, pick the whole thing up, okay? Take them all off and I'll see you back. All right, so this is the piece that I took off my 22 needle machine and we're going to stretch that out. Oh, it's just so great. Oh, I just love this yarn. Okay. In both directions. And then we're going to set that aside. But grab grab your first piece that you made, one of the first two pieces that you made of the body, and we are going to start our assembly, okay? So we're going to cut this off so it's not quite so long. And we're going to gently pull one end closed. Doesn't matter which one you choose first because we're going to do them both. Okay, so we're going to pull on that, but again, be very careful because this yarn is, it's tender. <laughs> it wants to be babied, okay? And now the thing with this yarn is it is hard to see that top row of stitches. Like, it's just impossible, actually. So you have to just make your way around. You have to just guess, and you can feel it with your needle. Feel a couple at a time. It is really weird because you can't see them. You just have to feel them. <laughs> okay. And you might be going under a couple and not through them. And that's okay. <laughs> just do the best that you can. And go around a couple of times because we want this to be secure. I can't even see where the middle is there. Oh, there it is. I can feel it with my thumb. Okay. Pull on that. Feel it with your thumb and go around again. Okay, and then when you're done that, I'm gonna just do another little section here. I always wanna make sure that this is nice and tight. When you're done that, then you're just going to grab a couple stitches if you can. <laughs> oh. There we go. I'm not kidding you. It's not easy. But it's worth it. Tie a little knot. And I'm going to do one more. Then I'm going to put my hand in there. And I'm just going to hide this on the inside. Okay. Just like that. Cut it so it's not so long. Then we're going to go to the other side. And we're going to begin. We're not going to. I'm going to cut that off too. You followed my videos um, before you know that I don't like using things that are too long that just get in my way so you cut them off if you don't need them okay but we're gonna now take our fiber fill and we are gonna stuff this now the thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to stuff it so that it's full but not so it's round okay 
we want it to be more flat and plump and not round and plump. Okay, so you just put that in there, push it up to the top. Get that in there. Okay, make a little bit more. Not much more, just a little bit more. Then I'm gonna begin to close this a little bit more. Then I'm gonna play with it, okay? Just like this. Work that so that you flatten it and not make it round. Okay, so it's just nice and... So you see it just like that from the side. You want it to be full, but flat. If it starts to get round, you've got too much in there, okay? So when that is done, then you take this other side. I think there's a little too much in there. I'm gonna pull it, because when I flatten it, it comes out the bottom. So I'm just gonna take a little bit out. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to reinforce this side just like we did the other side. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll see you back. Okay, there it is. I'm so excited about this. This is taking shape so beautifully. You know what I did? Oh wait, no, I just turned it around this way. I, I thought I got the colors mixed up. <laughs> you wanna make sure that when you join them together like this, that your colors match. Like this is a light, that's light, these are dark. So I just gotta flip it around like that. And then when I sew this one to look like this one, we want the bottom piece to be smaller than the top piece. Um, I wanna make sure my colors match. So um, take special note of that um, so that your butterfly looks looks even, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to make this look like this. So grab, um, grab your pink yarn or your green, doesn't really matter, and your darning needle, and like grab a, a longer one. If you have a longer one like this, it's easier to work with. And then um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll fix this little guy. What I should mention before you thread your needle and cut your yarn, make it a double strand. So if you put a single strand in, cut another one. Um, this is the same length, and we're going to make a double strand. That way we know we've got the strength there, and it's not going to break, okay? So, I'm going to put this little guy aside. Okay, so we are going to start on the bottom of the middle section. This is the middle section in the middle, okay? So, I'm going to go in from the back, come up. To the middle just like that leaving a tail just like that okay and then what we're going to do I have to take a look at what I did is I'm going to just weave in and out just like this am I in the camera yes just like this until I get to the middle of the green okay so there's the middle of the green pull it through we're going to go straight across here and then follow that down do exactly what we did in the front, but come down the other way, okay? Now we're going to go from the middle of the green down to this point here, which is the middle. So the middle to the middle. Come up. Now we do this a few times in a couple of different ways. This is just the first step, <laughs> okay? And then we're going to pull that. And you see how that's beginning to take shape? I want to make sure that I've got it a mirror image. Yes, sirree, I do. Okay, so I cut this off way too long, but it's okay. I'm going to still use it. I'll use it again. So I'm going to tie this just like that. I'm not scared it's going to break because double stranding it, it's surprising how much extra strength it gives it. Okay, tie that like that. Then you're going to cut off your ends. Take your wide needle, your bigger needle half of them on there because you can't fit all of them okay poke it down into that hole and out the pink not out the green out the pink match the color okay little fine details are what makes for more beautiful projects if i was to stick it out here you'd have a little pink edge that might show eventually and you don't want that you want to Take care to, to do it so you know it's going to look great. Okay, now we're going to take that yarn that's still left on our needle. Actually, we're going to change it to this green, okay? So change it to whatever your color is there. Um, take another double strand. Okay, now we're going to just 
put it through there, through the two points on either side, okay? Then I'm just gonna wrap this around. What did I do last time? I wrapped it around and then I tied it, that's what I did. Wrapped it around the front, tied it like this, just to give it some extra strength and stability. If the kids are playing with this or the adults, because guess what? This is going to an adult. Um, kids are going to love it, of course, and you can do um, whatever colors you want for, for gen if you want to make them gender specific. But um, I have a girlfriend who is beautiful like a butterfly, like seriously, but she doesn't realize it. She doesn't realize how beautiful she actually is. So I am giving her this butterfly pillow because she loves color. And I'm going to write a little note with it and I'm going to gift it to her and hopefully it will encourage her and make her day. And, uh, yeah, so that's what, that's where this inspiration came from. Okay. So there we go. We've got that one. Let's put it beside this next one. Make sure I, Oh, look at, I didn't hide those ends. So let me do that. Alrighty. There we go. And now when we turn it over, our colors match, you want the wider part. And you're, then you're going to just play with it. You want the wider part at the top and the narrower part goes to the bottom. And once we get our body in there, isn't that special? <laughs> we still have to do the antennas yet, but I want to inspire us by putting it together this far first. So grab your white piece for the middle and we're going to work on that next. All right. So for this piece, we're going to close one end completely. Okay. So now take your yarn end. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I was in a secondhand store a few weeks ago because I love to thrift shop. I do. I, I find it just so much fun. And uh, I got two of these balls of yarn. The jackets were off, so I have to, uh, I have to, I had to look them up to see what they were. I knew what they were, but I had to confirm it and get the color. Um, but I got them for uh, four dollars each. Like seriously, they're like. I don't know, I think they're $14.99 for one ball and they were $4 each and the whole ball was there. So somebody obviously bought them, didn't want to work with them. Maybe they were crocheting or something and this would be hard to crochet with because you can't see your stitches. Um, and I don't know, I just got lucky. So that's, that's. Uh, I hope if my friend watches this, she doesn't see. <laughs> How little I paid for this yarn but it doesn't matter it's a sentiment right it's the thought that counts so now that we have one end done we're going to take some fiber fill okay and we're going to shove it up there now we can't see the row count so I can't tell you how far but you're going to sh shove it up there then you're going to grab your thing because you want to see how big you think the head I think that's big enough okay so it's not a very big piece. You have to eyeball it because I can't tell you how many rows. I'm guessing there's one, two, three, four, maybe 10 rows in there. That's, that's my guess. Now you're going to put some white yarn on your needle and um, we're going to close it. All right. So again, I'm double stranding my yarn to give it some stability. And I think if I put my hand in here, it's going to be easier for me to, to go around. So we're going to just pick up stitches just like this. Try to Try to be as even as you can. So then push up on your on your fiber fill a bit. Make sure that this point is at the top and that'll help you guide where your needle goes, okay? In and out, all the way around. Oh, look at that. I'm lining up almost perfectly. So if you come out way down here, you know that you went way off. So then <laughs> take it out and start over. Let, let this, um, this one be your guide. So there we go. I'm going to push that back up in there. Take this. Oh, I wanted to add some safety eyes. So hang on, I'm going to loosen this. I always forget safety eyes because I have never used safety eyes on any of my videos because not everybody has them. So um, if you don't have safety, when I'm making my other animals and stuff, 
not everybody has safety eyes, so I always um, sew them on with, with yarn, but for this, I want to use safety eyes, so I'm going to grab them. All right, so I have six millimeter ones, which are right here, or 12 millimeter. That's the only two sizes I have. Oh, one looks too small and one looks too big. What to do, what to do. I think I'm going to go with a 12 because these do look a little too small. I'm going to think about it. So I'm going to go off camera for a second and I'm going to think about this and then I'll be right back. All right, so I hemmed and I hawed for a long time. Then I decided that these black big ones would probably be better um, because this is so fluffy and I just think that they'll be easier seen. So I'm going to... That's where my gonna put them a little bit further apart about like that okay so I'm gonna go off camera and do this okay because it's just easier for me I don't want I need to hold it closer to my body to get get to it so well, maybe not hang on push that through that's too low push that through then I'm going to go to this other side take this safety thing I put it on backwards, wouldn't you know that? Didn't get it far enough yet though, so that's good. I'm gonna push, 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 push so it locks, okay? And then, there we go. I'm gonna do the same thing this other one, right over here, and then I'll see you back. <laughs> All right, so there we go, I love it. You know, I've had safety eyes before. Um, I haven't used them for a long time, like I said to you, but I like the ones that I used to get. Like I bought these at Joann's when I was in the States. Um, I don't like the ends of these ones. I don't think that they that they would that they snap as good as the other ones did that I had. Um, they seem to have a ridge, a ridge that um, snapped in place a little bit better than these ones do. So I would not use these if I was giving this to a child. Um, I just am very much a stickler with that because um, they, there are safety eyes that if you do not put them on 100% properly, they easily come out. And not because, and, and sometimes it's not even because you didn't snap them good enough, but it's because the stitch is loose and it just comes through the hole of the stitch. Um, I've seen it happen actually. And um and that would just be like the worst thing. This is too long. I'm going to just take these ends and I'm going to hide them on the inside. All right, that is perfect. Now that we have that done, what we're going to do is we're going to very lightly stuff this. Very lightly because we're folding it in half, okay? So we're going to just put a very, like hardly any. I'm pulling that out so that it comes down to the length of my, of my piece here. That's all I want. Like, I just want a little bit in there, okay? And then I'm going to pull this tight. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, cut this one off. I'm gonna leave it long, but I am going to reinforce this once. And once I reinforce this to this end once then, um, or twice, then we will move on to the next part. Alrighty, folks. So that part is done. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn them right over and we're going to fold this in half. Now, mattress stitch would be the thing that I would use, but it's just not gonna work because you cannot see your stitches. So I'm just going to mimic the mattress stitch, but not worry about where it's going in. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making sure that I pick up, okay? So this is in half. And we're gonna do that all the way up pushing this all the way down because I want it in half, okay? So put your finger in there, push it down, mattress stitch it in your invisible stitches. Probably the easiest mattress stitch that you'll ever have to do because you don't have to line up the rows. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna push that down. I got filling on both sides of my finger. Push it down, pick up a section. Pick up a section. Oops. Got. There we go. Pick up a section. Pick up a section. Now 
Now I'm going to pinch the end and pull. Don't pull too hard though, because it's a single strand. We should have doubled it, but I didn't think of it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and continue all the way up to the head, okay? Keep going, keep going. Okay, and I'm not gonna go too far because the farther you go, the harder you have to pull on this yarn and I don't wanna break it. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna continue pushing that down. Pushing it down right up to the very top. Okay, now we're gonna pull that. Then I'm just gonna just cheat and I'm gonna just sew it like this. Now, if you're using regular four weight yarn or yarn that isn't fluffy like this, then of course, when you do your mattress stitch, sorry, but you have to follow the row. <laughs> um, follow my instructions. I have a video on how to do the mattress stitch or any of the blankets that I, a lot of the blankets that I do or different projects that I have where I've used it. Um, watch it and you will be able to, to see a proper way to do the mattress stitch and that's what you'll want to do if you are using yarn that is not fluffy, okay? So there we go. Now I'm going to just uh, trail this out to the, well, let's do it out to the side of the neck here. Up to the side of the neck here. It's not going to be long enough, but look at that. Isn't that just precious? All right, so what we're going to do next... Are you still with me, peeps? <laughs> we're going to double this one. So get a fairly long one. Double the length of the body. And we're going to... Assemble this part. But you know what? I think I'm... Well, I was going to use a different needle, but I'm just going to use this one. Okay. It's getting pretty late here and I'm downstairs in my craft room again so there's no light coming in through the window and if I turn the lights on that are above me it put cast such a deep shadow a dark shadow so I have my light that I use for crafting and I'm just hoping that the picture is good enough okay so what we're going to do is we're going to come in along the very side here we're going to come a little bit lower than the middle because we want to fit that other piece in there just like an eighth of an inch lower than the middle. Let's put it upside up like this, okay? You know what? It's easier if I just tell you the middle. So let's let's put those together like that. Let's go into the middle, leaving a bit of a tail there, then into the middle here. And it's like we're mattress stitching again. Don't you just love that stitch? Like, it's the best stitch. Okay, and we're going to... <laughs> This isn't going to be long enough. Oh, Shelly. Well, maybe it will once I pull it. Hang on. So now let's pull. Oh, that is so stinking satisfying. I just love doing that. Okay. Now we're going to continue up. I'm taking quite a big chunk. Like a half an inch for sure. Make sure you stay in the middle. And I'm just going to go up to the top of the green. So one more here, and one more here. Okay, then I'm gonna pull that again. Then I'm going to just tie this off. You guys, isn't this so fun? Like, this is so fun. My mind just uh, visualizes these things and I say, just go for it. Like when I saw this yarn, I knew it had to be a butterfly. Either that or a unicorn. Those were my two things that I was thinking what I would use it for. But the butterfly went out. But you know what? I got enough. Maybe I'll do a unicorn too. So here is the one. Now we're going to take this other end and we're going to tie it off and hide it as well. Okay. So This one I'm going to move over to this side here. 
so that that's a little bit more secure than it was. You hear my husband? If you heard him getting a little bit hyper out there, it's because he's watching sports and someone made a bad play, apparently. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, so here we go. Got that done. Stick it through. Cut it off. And there we go. If you have one side that looks a little bit like it looks like, well, now that I do this, it looks the same. But if you have one side that looks like it's a, there's a little deeper indent than the other side, then that's the side you want to use to put your body on. And I think that's this side. So then I'm going to take my body. Oh, you guys. <laughs> uh, you want to snug his head right in there. Okay. Just like that. And then the tail is going to be a bit longer, just like that. And we're going to sew her down. Okay. I can't wait to get the antennas on this, but we're going to do this first and then we're going to work on the antennas. Okay. So grab, um, it, I say grab your white yarn and, uh, put it on your needle, double strand it. And we're going to need two, two double strand lengths of white yarn, one for each side. And we'll sew this on. Okay. All right. Your eyes look a little there. <laughs> to fix your eyes we are going to pick up just the corner of the head or the side of the head right here about just below the eyes about a third of the way up okay grab that set this little fella right where you want it to be then go right across and pick it up on the wing okay where'd this third piece come from Oh, that's the that's from when we sewed up the end. Okay, let me get rid of that. All right, so I hid that end that was on the head here that I left out. I I, I snugged it up inside of there and and left it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to pick up a piece from the side of the head, just a little ways up, and then we're gonna go right into the side of the pillow. Okay, into the side of the head. Pick up a piece. You know, you can put this on the side like that. Just like that. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And go into the side of the pillow. More low than high. Okay. Into the side. Into the pillow. Or the butterfly. This, I mean, I'm calling it a pillow, but it might just be a stuffed animal. Something to something to play with, and you might not use it as a pillow. Um, throw it on your bed. Oh, it's just so cute. Okay. If you have a little garden room, like a sunroom kind of thing, wouldn't that be, in the summertime, nice little decor piece? Make it in the colors of your room. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling this. So I'm gonna take these, the ends at the top here and I'm gonna pull that and see how beautiful that is. Like, oh my goodness, that's so great. Okay, and we're going to sew it down to the top of the green here, just where the green is, cause I want this, this to be um, left. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so go ahead and do both of that and I'll see you when you're done. Actually, I'll see you before you're done. So now that I have that finished, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to just pick up again and through here and I'm gonna make sure I have a good secure knot okay so that's one I'm gonna do it again and two and then into the body of my butterfly and pull real hard cut it off and I'm gonna do the same with that end and both ends on the other side. All right, isn't this just absolutely adorable? I'm loving it. I think it's just gorgeous. <laughs> okay, but now we're gonna work on the antennas, okay? So I um, decided not to do black. Um, I'm going to do a color that's in here and I, I'm gonna stick with this green, dark, darker green, because I really, really love it. I think it'll look nice. Now, um, you can do your antennas however you like. You can. You might just want to use a pipe cleaner and twist it up and, and sew it on so that the pointy 
parts are inside the head and then you sew around it to secure it. Um, you can uh, look at my yip yip pattern on, on my YouTube channel to find out how I sewed on um, antennas on my yip yip and do much the same. Or you can, um, if you don't have the Addy egg, you can make an I cord, do it over seven stitches uh, and then um, mattress stitch up the side um, but put your pipe cleaner in first, mattress stitch up the side, um, and uh, do it that way and make it as long as you want it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make an eye cord using my Addy egg. All right, so I'm going to take my egg, I'm going to take my yarn, and I'm going to figure out a way to get it into that little slot. I'm just going to use this little needle here and push it in. See if I can make that work. It's hard to sometimes get the yarn into there. There we go. But if you use one of these um, wider tipped needles and it, it makes a difference and it helps you okay okay so you're going to pop it down into the center there then just with my like my other addies i color that red divider with a black permanent marker and i've just picked two white needles and i make one the first needle and one the last needle um, i also colored the tip of this but needs to be done again okay so i have that down into the center of my egg i'm going to go underneath the first one and once i get under that first one then i can pull this out just like this so that I can work with it better, okay? And then I'm gonna go be in front and behind, in front and behind and in front. Then I'm gonna pull it back through that little feeder. And then we're gonna to begin to knit. Slack this off in my ball. And I'm, I've got my thumb over here to guide it, but I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm just letting it go loosely. So then that black thing came around twice now, so I know I've done two rows. I can put the handle on, but I'm not going to. That's three. Four. That's five rows. I'm on six. Oops, that one's going to come, going to tuck, so I'm going to help that one along I think I'm on six something like that <laughs> okay and then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner I'm going to cut it in half fold it in half and cut it in half shouldn't use those scissors I know someone's screaming at me but that's okay and then I'm going to fold it in half again and twist it Then I'm just going to fold up on those pointy ends and push down. Then I'm going to put that right into the center there. See? I actually don't need very many more rows. That's six rows. I'm going to do ten. Seven. Eight. This yarn works great in here. Nine. 10, I'm actually going to do 12, sorry, 11, and one more, 12. Okay, then you're going to cut off an end, and we're going to take it off our machine just like we do our other machines. Just going to use this little plastic needle here that I have. Okay, we're going to thread that. Actually, we're going to take it out of this little yarn guide, just like we take it out of the guide in our machines. We're going to go around until that releases. So this first one is released so I can take it off. I have a video on how to use the Addy egg. So um, if this is overwhelming for you, go and go and watch that and learn the, the ins and outs of the Addy egg before you attempt this. But I did 12 rows. And again, if you don't have the egg, you can just use the pipe cleaner by itself. Or you can make a flat panel over about seven needles on your machine and mattress stitch up the side and use it that way, okay? So you would do it in an you would do it in a flat panel mode on your machine. There we go, got all six released. So I'm gonna pull up on that. Oh no wonder. I didn't think it came right out okay so I'm gonna push that back in 
because I didn't have the bottom all tight, but it's easy to get back in there. And then I'm going to tighten that around there and then I'm going to sew it closed with the end, okay? So I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to thread my better needle and then I'm just going to reinforce around this edge here, making sure that I sew in around that pipe cleaner, okay? So I'm going to just push that over and then I'm going to, you just do what you have to do because you can't see the stitches, okay? So just, just do what you have to do to get it closed and to get that pipe cleaner end hidden. So just like that, that's all I had to do, okay? So now I'm going to just tie this off. Yay, 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 yay. There we go. And I'm going to do that on the other side. I just want a little antenna. I don't want something that's really long. So 12 rows is perfect. Okay, I'm going to just reinforce that. Hope I'm not going off the camera. Get in there, just like so. Tie it off. And there we go, we've got our little antenna. Now we're going to grab our piece. We're going to hide the one end and cut it off. And then take the other end. And sew it on. Okay, so if I have one there and one there, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna pick up in the head, just like this, about a quarter of an inch grab the base then I'm gonna just pick up all all around the edge even though it's just a small little small little circumference around I'm gonna just pick up from the head and then pick up from the antenna just like that and go all the way around head antenna you know the nice thing about this kind of yarn is you can't see where your stitches are. I mean, you would think it's a bad thing because you can't see your stitches, but it's actually a good thing <laughs> because you don't have to be so particular. You just sew it on and it's done, okay? I'll come around this side, one more. And I'm going to just take it to the back. Oops, there goes my Addy egg. Tie it off. And one more knot. And then hide it up into your work. It's secure. It is very secure. Okay. Cut that off. Then let's turn this little baby around. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take my finger and I'm going to roll it, okay? Or do you roll it the other way? Just at the top like that, yeah, you roll it out, okay? And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add the other one and it's gonna be perfect. So go ahead, make your second one and um, attach it and then see me back. All right, friends, there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, but you know what? I'm looking at, at this little guy and I think he needs something else. What do you think he needs? I agree, a face, a mouth. So I'm going to pop this up through the back. Come right there on the inside of that one eye, not lined up, but just in a little bit. And then we're going to just put a little mouth, not a big one, just a little one. Okay, I'm going to go in there, up a little bit here. That's the base of the mouth. Now I'm just going to do this side, right here, into that corner, and up. Just like that. 
work this out so it looks like it's joined. Then I'm going to go back up to this top corner. <laughs> yeah, I like that better. Then I'm going to pass over this where this join is right there and I'm going to go down um, a little farther underneath that line up into the corner mouth here. This helps me to cover the little edge that or the little point that was there from the corner. Okay, then I'm going to go back underneath in the middle there and out the back, out where I came in. Okay. I'm going to have to give them a little trim there so you can actually see the shape of the mouth. When I'm concentrating, I can't talk. Sorry, you can tell. always tell when, when I'm doing one word at a time because <laughs> that's usually when I'm doing facial features because that's the hardest part, I think. Now I kind of bunged that up, but let me just uh, cut some of this off here. Just a little bit. Give him a little wee haircut. Play with that. There, perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this off, tie a knot without pulling it from the front, put it back on my needle, and folks, we are almost done. You can hear the lawnmower outside again. It's one of those lawn mowing days out my window. Okay, pull that through fluff that up, cut this off, fluff that up so it's hidden, and there we have them. Okay, don't know if I like that mouth. I'll have to think on that. I think I just have to play with these little white fibers that are poking out of the middle of the strands and making it a little difficult. That's the little fine detailing that you need to do to uh, to make it look better. There we go, I got the one that was causing the problem. Okay. There we go. Love them. I just love it. I think it's just so absolutely adorable. So thank you again for joining me in this tutorial, my friends. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you go ahead and make yourself one of these or two or three or four or however many you like. Um, they are just like, it's just so adorable. You can make the antennas longer if you want and then um, turn them in a little bit, you know, turn them in a couple of times. I'm not sure, I'm gonna play with these for a little bit, but I like them shorter because then I, then I don't think they, they don't lose their shape over time. They just stay the same. So um, that's, that's the finished little butterfly. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial, my friends. Um, it's always a pleasure spending time with you. Um, and also, if you make a butterfly, please show us in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. I would love to see your butterfly and the yarn choices you used and the color variations that you um, decided to go with. And uh, yeah, that would be awesome to see. So please show us your, your finished work in my Facebook group. Thanks again for joining me. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Take care, my friends, and have a fantastic day.